Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Massive protests erupt in Pakistan over soaring electricity and fuel prices. Taliban bans Afghan female students to study abroad. And Pakistan disrupting peace in Jammu and Kashmir by sponsoring terrorism. The people in Pakistan have been facing unending woes. Ongoing political uncertainty and economic crisis has made their life miserable. The country is now facing a massive outburst due to high electricity bills and fuel costs. The hikes have been met with anger and widespread protests across Pakistan. These unfolding events cast a spotlight on the escalating economic challenges, raising concerns about the broader repercussions for the lives of ordinary citizens. We have a report. Widespread demonstrations have erupted throughout Pakistan in response to the recent surge in electricity rates. Angry citizens are taking to the streets to express their frustration over the escalation in their electricity bills, with some bills even doubling or tripling in certain instances. Cities such as Peshawar, Karachi, Lahore, Multan and Rawalpindi have turned into epicenters of protest. People are barricading roads, burning tires and rallying against the surge in electricity costs. The protesters are demanding that the government roll back the recent increase in electricity prices, which they say is unfair and unsustainable. The intensity of this public anger compelled Pakistan's caretaker Prime Minister Anwarul Haq to urgently convene an emergency meeting. The power regulators raised the national average tariff by approximately 5 Pakistani rupees per unit in July, pushing the baseline unit tariff from 24 Pakistani rupees to 29 Pakistani rupees. Subsequently, on August 22, the government once again sought to increase the power rate by 3 Pakistani rupees 55 paise per unit. Over the span of a year, Pakistan has witnessed a 76% surge in the average power tariff. However, the turmoil isn't restricted to electricity alone. The nation recently announced yet another escalation in the prices of petrol and high-speed diesel. This marked the second price hike in just one month, raising the cost of petrol by a substantial 19.95 Pakistani rupees per litre. All this when Pakistan is facing a shortage in electricity production. The hike in electricity prices and fuel costs is closely linked to the conditions Pakistan agreed to for a 3 billion US dollars bailout by the International Monetary Fund in June. We have made some promises with IMF, some commitments. We have also said that we don't give a lot of subsidies. The situation of the country जो हमारे गैर मुल्की जरे मुबादला के जराएक का जो हाल है उसमें ये मुमकिन नहीं है कि हमारा जैसा मुल्क महंगा तेल खरीदे और सस्ता बेचे पाकिस्तान इज करेंटली फेसिंग इट्स वर्स्ट इन्फ्लेशन क्राइसिस इन डेकेड्स लास्ट ईयर्स डेवस्टेटिंग फ्लड्स व्हिच डिस्ट्रॉयड मेनी क्रॉप्स have worsened the current economic turmoil. The prices of food are surging and have increased by more than a third in just one year. 
According to Pakistan's Bureau of Statistics, the annual inflation rate in May 2023 was 37.97%, the highest since 1969. The high inflation is having a devastating impact on the lives of ordinary Pakistanis. Many people are struggling to make ends meet and the poor and vulnerable are being disproportionately affected. The Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan has plunged women into a new dark age. Since the group came to power, they have imposed a series of restrictions on women's rights, pushing them out of public life. One of the Taliban's most recent restrictions is a ban on female students leaving the country to study. This means that Afghan women who have been accepted to universities in the United Arab Emirates will now be unable to attend. This ban is a major setback for Afghan women who have already lost so much under the Taliban rule. We have this report. Ever since taking control of Afghanistan in August 2021, the Taliban continues to muzzle women's rights in the nation. Over the span of just two years, the group has systematically marginalized women from public life. The Taliban government recently barred approximately 60 young Afghan female students from going to Dubai for pursuing higher education through scholarships. These students were slated to enroll at the University of Dubai. Back in December 2022, Khalaf al habdu a Dubai businessman and the founder chairman of the al habdu group, had pledged to help bring at least 100 female Afghan students to Dubai. He took this step when the Taliban banned Afghan girls and women from studying in universities in Afghanistan. However, al habdur has recently released a video statement revealing that he had intended to sponsor the female students' university education and had even arranged for a plane to transport them to the UAE. The Taliban government refused to uh, allow the girls who is coming to study here is 100 girls which is sponsored by me and they refuse them to board in the plane and already we have paid for the air, uh, aircraft we are we organized everything for them here accommodation medication transportation security everything uh, university thanks to dr bestaki as well the head of the president of the Dubai University and everybody else like the police participated, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, immigration, the airport. Under the Taliban rule, independent travel was not allowed for women, though they were permitted to travel abroad with their husbands or a male family escort. However, even this concession was ignored in a recent incident wherein Taliban officials from Vice and Virtue Department barred women from boarding the plane despite their escorts. One of the students managed to send a voice message to al Abdur, lamenting, Mahram, but they don't allow those who have mahram. Uh, so when they see uh, the student visa and the student ticket, they don't allow us. I don't know uh, what to do. Uh, please help us. Um, we are so concerned about this matter. From the time the Taliban assumed control, their efforts began with curtailing basic education rights for women, then progressed to enforcing strict dress codes. Subsequently, the group systematically limited women's access to public spaces and parks, followed by obstructing women's engagement with international entities like the United Nations. Now, their control has reached to a point where even female students aspiring to pursue higher education abroad are being denied that fundamental right. The Taliban has taken over. Yes, the draconian restrictions were not uh, inflicted at once. They uh, went about it step by step. First, they closed down uh, education for the women saying, that first steps had to be taken to give them protection and dignity. But we know that, uh, that those steps never took place and they were shut out of 
all the institutions of education higher intermediate and lower in stages what is new this time is that they have even stopped women from leaving the country to receive higher education this is a new you see previously women could leave afghanistan provided there was a mehram or a male protector here even with the male protector the taliban is absolutely clear women will not receive any education and this is hardly surprising because an educated woman is the biggest threat to fundamental fundamentalism or fundamentalist islam and therefore how do you counter your biggest threat by ensuring that this threat never materializes that is women do not receive, ed receive education at all and that is precisely what they are doing a century ago the women in afghanistan were free they enjoyed the right to education right to political participation and the right to movement even in the 1970s in kabul universities women made up more than 60% of students and they were equally represented in several public institutions but today under the taliban rule afghan women have been deprived of fundamental rights let alone having a life of dignity Let's move to Jammu and Kashmir, the Union Territory of India, which has been prospering since after the abrogation of Article 317 2019. The peace and prosperity in the region is not fitting to neighboring Pakistan's agenda, and it continues to make efforts to revive terrorism by infiltrating terrorists into Jammu and Kashmir. However, vigilant security forces are successfully thwarting all their endeavors, contributing to the region's peace. We have a report. Pakistan-based terror outfits have consistently made efforts to disrupt the peace in the Jammu and Kashmir region. These terrorists receive funding and training with the intention of infiltrating into Jammu and Kashmir, targeting both security personnel and the local population. Just days ago, on August 26. A joint operation involving the Jammu and Kashmir Police, the 26 Assam Rifles, and the Central Reserve Police Force successfully busted a terror module in North Kashmir's Bandipora district. Two individuals were apprehended, found in possession of arms and ammunition. Among those caught were Munira Begum, the wife of the late terrorist commander Yusuf Chopan, and another person identified as Shafai Zubair. associated with the terrorist group Al Badr Bandipura police has apprehended one released terrorist Shafiat Rishi resident of Nisbal Sumbul the accused was in touch with Pakistan based handlers and was on his way to receive a cache of arms and ammunition which were aimed at the revival of terrorism in the district Bandipura uh, one lady Munira Begum who's the wife of killed terrorist Yusuf Chopan was also apprehended uh, one Prinko Three magazines and ninety rounds, one pen pistol, and one Chinese pistol, one magazine and eight rounds have been recovered. Terrorist networks based in Pakistan have shifted their approach, now involving Kashmiri women to provide logistical support and deliver weapons. The utilization of women stems from the perception that they are less likely to draw suspicion from security forces and can facilitate access. to restricted areas they are sometimes employed as suicide bombers due to a reduced likelihood of thorough searches by security forces in another collaborative effort the jammu and kashmir police along with the 28 rashtriya rifles dismantled yet another terror module in kupwara district of north kashmir three operatives from lashkar-e-taiba were apprehended during this operation resulting in the seizure of six hand grenades traced back to Pakistan and China sources from intelligence agencies reveal the existence of multiple terror camps in Pakistan occupied Kashmir facilitating infiltration into Indian territory with assistance from Pakistani security agencies these terrorists not only undergo training but also receive logistical support and weaponry to carry out disruptive activities in Jammu and Kashmir Indian security forces have exposed several underground tunnels along the line of control 
exploited by terrorists for infiltrating into Jammu and Kashmir. You see, this shows the desperation of the Pakistan army and the ISI to push in terrorists into the Indian territory. Of late, the security grid on the line of control of the security forces has been so good and so efficient that most of the terrorists trying to cross the line of control have been eliminated there only. Uh, not only that, the state of art surveillance systems have been deployed. Earlier, they used to try to use the difficult snowbound areas to infiltrate because there was uh, minimum surveillance there. But now, with the surveillance having increased and the state of art surveillance equipment having been placed to cover those gaps, they are not able to use those areas. Hence, they have started this now trying to infiltrate via the tunnels. This experiment was successfully tried by the terrorists in the international border sector. And they have been successful number of times in infiltrating through the tunnels. So they are trying to implicate or replicate the same now in the line of control. Following the abrogation of Article 370 and Article 35A in Jammu and Kashmir, security forces have escalated efforts to curb unlawful activities, particularly those aimed at disturbing peace and unity in the Union territory. While Jammu and Kashmir is experiencing rapid development, including infrastructure projects, increased tourism and expanding business opportunities, these advancements are at odds with Pakistan's objectives. This has prompted the neighborhood country to refocus on radicalizing local Kashmiri individuals. Despite progress, security forces remain unwavering, thwarting endeavors to disrupt the tranquility and harmony of the region. The residents of Balochistan and Sindh provinces in Pakistan took to the streets against Pakistani authorities against the surge in the number of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killing cases. Commemorating the International Day of the Victims of Enforced Disappearances on 30th of August, the leaders of Jess in the Freedom Movement, JSFM, along with the family members of the victims, held a rally against the Pakistani authorities, warning them of a massive protest in the coming days had they not released the victims. We have a report. The growing number of enforced disappearances and atrocities in the peace-loving Palochistan and Sindh provinces have yet again brought the residents at loggerheads with the Pakistani administration. Commemorating the International Day of the Victims of Enforced Disappearances on 30th August, a large number of people, including the family members of the victims, held a rally at Jhaz Chowk Sevan Press Club in Sindh province. The rally, organized by the leaders of Jai Sindh Freedom Movement, highlighted the surge in cases of enforced disappearances across Balochistan and Sindh. While talking to the media, the JSFM in a joint statement said that, We consider the issue of missing persons of the national movement of Sindh and Balochistan as a violation of human rights. You know, the forced disappearances in Pakistan for political and other reasons is uh, unfortunate reality, especially of the Baloch people and Balochistan, uh, where people are fighting for their rights, their independence, cost of living for the problems that they are facing in day to day. But uh, the, what is happening is, I mean, I understand that about 7 lakhs, you have uh, people, uh, nearly 12,000 cases of disappearances have been registered or at least are report, reported. And nothing has happened on that. Even Musharraf himself had uh, acknowledged this problem. Enforced disappearances in Balochistan and Sindh have been a long stain on Pakistan's human rights record. The use of enforced disappearance by Pakistani security agents continues to play a significant part in their attempt to quell Baloch and Sindh self-determination and constitutes a major human rights violation against the people of Balochistan and Sindh.
According to a recent figures released by Commission of Inquiry on Enforced Disappearances in July 2022, a total of 8,696 cases of missing persons have been reported. While 6,513 of these cases have been solved, 2,219 cases are still pending. Demonstrations against targeted killings and fake encounters are often held in Balochistan and Sindh and in Western countries. While holding placards and banners chant slogans against inhuman atrocity in Pakistan, they urge the international community to speak out against the genocide as the silence of the world community is giving impunity to Pakistan. This is something uh, that needs to be addressed uh, by the international community, but I doubt very much that there is a very a uh, keen interest on the part of the international community to, to address the problem or for that matter that of the Pakistan government which continues uh, to perhaps feel that that is the best way to look the other way or um, uh, try to engineer it also. This is quite possible uh, because they think that this kind of an insurgency uh, is something that needs to be suppressed and uh, must be uh, brought to books those people and that is why it is now also likely uh, dissatisfaction uh, is very likely to lead to some kind of extremism. While thousands of Baloch and Sindh have been abducted and disappeared since its illegal occupation, hundreds of others have been eliminated in the line of Pakistan's kill and dump policy. It is a tool by the Pakistani state to silence the oppressed people of the poor provinces. Families of the disappeared people suffer significant harm. They live with continuous uncertainty about the fate or whereabouts of their loved ones. Some of these missing persons' relatives have passed away with the pain and suffering in their chests, but their loved ones have never returned back to them and they died waiting. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.nin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.